Oh my goodness, guys. I can't believe it's summer. Well, I know summer doesn't, like, officially start until June, but I'm off of school, and I'm taking a break, and it's hot, so I'm gonna call it summer for now. Anyways, I wanted to apologize for the lack of content lately. Like I said, I've been in school this semester, and I just unexpectedly decided to take a break, and then while I was taking that break, I kind of thought of a better way to do this. So I'm thinking I should release podcasts in seasons rather than just weekly and straight through because this is not my full-time job. I am a full-time student. I, okay, here's my plan. I want to release these podcasts in seasonal seasons. So that means I will be releasing regular content during the summer. I will take a break so I can do my school and nobody will be asking anything anything of me because I'm telling you this beforehand. And then in the winter when I also have a break. I'm just hoping that system works. I'm hoping that works for me. And yeah, that's probably how I'm going to do it from now on. Speaking of... Welcome to the first episode of my summer 2022 season. I have some content ready for you guys. I'm ready to get back on a schedule and keep educating you guys because I've learned a lot this semester that I kind of want to just bring to you so you guys can have the gift of knowledge as well. All right, now that you guys are informed of my schedule from now on, Let's dive into the episode. I know you guys have come here because you saw the title. And I've kind of just wanted to do this because I know every news station and every public health department releases stuff at this time of the year, but I just I just think it's important. So, today we're going to be talking about safe alcohol consumption because it is summer. It is a time for everybody to relax and enjoy their free time, spend time with friends and family, do what they love, even if that is alcohol consumption. Now, because we are going to be talking about safe alcohol consumption, I should give a trigger warning for anybody that I do plan on talking about use disorders, so if that triggers you, kindly click away. It will not offend me, but I just think it's important that people have a heads up and know how to do it safely. I had a class this past semester at UT Arlington, and it was over vulnerable populations, and this one lecture that we had talked about alcohol use disorders and showed us statistics based on race in the U.S. And as we were talking about it, one of my classmates was telling this story-ish about how she is an officer for her sorority on campus. And because fraternities and sororities are known for, like, encouraging alcohol and drug use, she wanted to speak up about it. And she was telling us about how her position, or I mean her duties as her officer position involve getting her sorority members out of trouble and keeping them safe. And one thing that I remember that I will stick with me for the rest of my life is she said, I'm not here to get you in trouble, I'm here to get you out of trouble. And the reason that sticks with me is because I feel that same way about other things. Like, I I know recently we had the abortion disputes. And just to use that as an example, it's like, you can be morally against abortion, but you can also vote for people that are pro-choice and vote against abortion laws because you are aware that the risks of 
a lack of safe abortions leads to negative medical outcomes. And it's just things like that. And I'm honestly the same way with people using drugs. Like, I'm definitely against drug use and I don't endorse it. But if you want to use drugs, that's fine. I just want you to know how to use it safely and get out of trouble. Now, the following facts and tips that I'm about to share are from the NIH, so I hope that you consider that a reliable source, and you should know that it is a reliable source if you go to school and you take an English class of any sort. <laughs> so, let's get into it. My first thing in my notes is the definition of binge drinking. So, binge drinking is defined by the NIH as a female having four or more drinks or a male having five or more drinks in the span of two hours or less. And another term that I wrote down is alcoholism or alcohol use disorder. And this is defined as an impaired ability to stop or control alcohol use despite adverse social, occupational, or health consequences. Now, you guys might be wondering, what's the difference between binge drinking and alcoholism, even though I just told you the definitions that are listed by the NIH? But here's the difference if, you, if you're unable to kind of pick this apart by the definitions that are given. Binge drinking is episodic, meaning you're not drinking regularly on a daily basis, but when you do, you drink a lot. And alcoholism is not episodic, it's just a constant cycle of alcohol consumption that affects you in your personal life. And yeah, that's pretty much the difference between the two. A really interesting and kind of scary fact that I learned in my women's health class this semester is that the effects of one drink in a female are almost the same as two drinks in a male. That's kind of scary when you think about it. Okay, so this next tip, well, tip more or less for those first definitions, but this next tip is also from the NIH, and it is using a buddy system. I know you guys have probably heard about this before, but I just want to reiterate because, again, I want you guys to be safe when you are consuming alcohol at any time of the year, but I know summer is definitely one of those, like, seasonal peaks. So, you know how the buddy system works. You go with a friend, they stay sober, and they make sure that you get home safe. Another new thing that has come up recently is the wider access of fentanyl test strips. And basically what you do is you'll either pour a sample of your drink onto that test strip. It's kind of like a paper pregnancy test where you put the liquid on the strip. If you're taking drugs, like a solid drug, then you'll crush that up, mix it with some water, and then use that solution to pour on the test strip, and then it will tell you if it has been laced with fentanyl or not. Just make sure you're following the directions and using it properly and correctly, and you'll have a much safer experience. And then some other things that you guys have probably heard before. Keep your eye on your drink if you are out with other people. As even if you're just at a house party with friends, keep an eye on your drink. Watch it be made. Do not take your eye off of it. If you do have to leave, ensure that you have a trusted buddy watch your drink for you. And if you're if you're unable to watch it, just keep keep an eye out for chemical changes in the drink, like cloudiness, a clear. Actually, I'm not sure about clear, but if it changes color, if it changes scent, just different chemical reactions that you may observe that, that might give you a hint as to whether or not your drink has been tampered with. But yeah, I just wanted to drop some tips for you guys and give you guys some reminders in this PSA because I truly just want everybody to be safe while they're having fun. 
again, like that classmate in my class said, I'm not here to get you in trouble. I'm here to get you out of trouble. And with that being said, I will see you next time. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being patient. And I hope you enjoy just seasonal podcast episodes rather than being disappointed by me not releasing throughout the year. But yeah, I'll see you next time.